The Thestral sort of began life in the art department in London, the Creature Shop. They, they mocked up the design, built a maquette, even a full-size version. And uh, for us, it was really trying to figure out their sort of character and personality. And, and for Thestrals, you know, even though their appearance is sort of horrific in a way, in reality, they're a very sort of graceful and majestic, powerful and proud creature. They really wanted it to feel kind of fleshy and make sure that the skin was sliding across the bones. And you can't really show that in a maquette. There's always that last little bit of work that has to be done on the CGN. With this Thestral, it was basically a living skeleton. And most animals, by the time they get into that shape, aren't walking around, certainly not flying around. So we had to, to be a little more creative with our reference. For the form of the Thestral and, and uh, guiding us on what the bone structures and muscles should be doing, we mostly used horses. Because it's a flying horse, we also then went and got some bird reference as well. One of the things that we really wanted to get was sort of, if you watch horses, they, they kind of sit there and they, they twitch every so often, their little muscles go off and, and the skin jiggles a little bit. As the animator moves the Thestral's leg up, um, there's a certain amount of muscles which get activated to do that movement. So we go through and animate those as shapes that are driven by the joints that are driven by the animators. So even as an animator's making a simple walk cycle, all of the muscles are firing when they should, the muscles are flexing as they should, and the skin that's riding over the surface of those muscles is responding as it should. The forest sequence were introduced to a baby Thestral, which was an idea that David Yates had because he wanted to show that these were living creatures that bred and ate, and they weren't some kind of skeletal ghostly thing. They were real and living. Luna's going to throw him a piece of meat that he'll sort of devour really hungrily. And we found reference of different animals eating for the baby, you know, vultures, lions, you know, hyenas, and, and really, you kind of study and then interpolate. You look at the design and the, the mood of the shot and try to find something that's close, but then adapt it into what it needs to be. The wings are actually mostly based off of bats. They actually took some extremely high resolution photos for us of, of bat wings. They, they got a bat in and they moved its wings around. And in this case, they're, they're quite tight. And so if, if the wing opens, it stretches. And when it closes, they tighten up. We started off with uh, doing some wing simulations to make sure that you know we have a thin layer for the wings that would, as he flies, would kind of undulate and flap with the with the wind. We see a shot where they unfold the wings, and you know there's a sort of an elegance to them that sort of belies their their physical appearance in some respects. It's J.K. Rowling's world, and you know a horse, flying horse, even as skinny as these things are, they might need wings a little bit bigger than we've given them here to get off the ground, but that's where the magic comes in.